Oh, Chris Jericho has to be the first AEW champion. The Schleg Daddy saith, so it shall be done. Oh, he's going to bring more attention and more prestige to that title, being the first champion. Hangman Page isn't ready to carry that strap. Chris Jericho is. <laughs> He'll bring more attention and more eyeballs on it than anybody else in that company possibly could. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know if I was totally wrong, but why, 2 j this wasn't exactly what I was going for. Now imagine being yourself, Chris Jericho, almost 50 years old, the only thing expanding more quickly then your accomplishments in professional wrestling may be your waistline. And believe me, I'm pushing 40. I'm understanding that dad bod life. And on Saturday night, you main event all out and you win the AEW World Championship. You are handed this belt. You are the first gatekeeper for the company. You are the standard bearer. You are the face for all Elite Wrestling. So what do you do? You take your title of the Longhorn, sit down for a freaking steak dinner, and get the belt snatched on you. Really? Really? I said you're talking about how much more meaning there will be with Chris Jericho winning the AEW World Championship first over Hangman Page, and you go losing it at a chain restaurant steakhouse. even something I would describe to us Marks doing. Because God damn it, when you see a lot of these fans of professional wrestling and how seriously they take their memorabilia and your mer their merchandise, I can guarantee you they probably aren't getting the replica AEW title or the replica WWE title stolen in a Longhorn Steakhouse and it most certainly as hell wouldn't lose the real damn deal here. There's almost a part of me that really wishes this would have been one big work. That would have been a storyline that would have carried out all the way to October 2nd. And like that one guard gnome or whatever from the Travelocity commercials, I think it is, somebody could have posted random pictures of the belt at different locales all around the world. Like, you want to talk about bridging the gap between the All Out show and October 2nd. Well, Bob's your uncle. There you freaking go. But how the hell do you lose your world title at a damn restaurant? Hangman Page would have done that. Ah, hell, what the hell do I know? He probably would have went to Applebee's and given it to one of the grill cooks or some shit. Who knows? He'd have rode in on his horse and left it in the fucking saddlebag, probably. So I can't even say that. But this is like... <laughs> This is like historically hilariously awesome. Of all the people that you can make your first world champion of your company, you rightfully choose the biggest star that you have, the biggest name that you have in Chris Jericho. And he goes on to reward that faith and instill that confidence in you by losing the world title. Not losing it in a match in another territory, or not wrestling and losing it to somebody. Legitimately losing it, having it stolen out from under him because he was too busy diving into his 12 ounce team out! Team out! For all you know, he probably was eating a damn baked potato because I can say, Chris, it looks like you've been eating a lot of starches lately. Come on, guys, this has, got, this has got to be one of the funniest things I have seen in wrestling in years. And, of course, the AEW people, the bots, the defenders, are only mildly amused by this. And they're not really going out of their way to crap all over Chris Jericho for this, which he legitimately deserves to have happen. Because as much as the fucking... 
Bucks and Cody were crapping on the design of the 24-7 title. You know what so far hasn't happened with that crappy looking 24-7 title, Cody? Matt, Nick, Truth, Drake Maverick. They don't manage to lose the damn title. And they actually go all over the place with the damn thing. They manage to keep tabs on it. So instead of sitting there and always knocking a company and talking about another company, when you should be focusing on yourself, you legitimately should be focusing on yourself. And if you don't want this type of thing to happen, then have somebody with Chris Jericho to literally just man the belt. That's all he does. You got a billionaire back in you. Pay somebody a couple hundred bones a night to sit there and carry around the world title for them. Put it in some kind of Halliburton briefcase or something. I don't know what the hell you do. I don't care. My only regret is that the bell has now been found. So what was hopefully going to be some big, long mystery. It could have been one of those great urban legends 20, 30 years down the road. Imagine if the bell had never been found and never been returned. It would have been sitting on some neckbeard's wall in his freaking man cave in his basement. What a fucking conversation piece that would have been. Oh, man. This is just one of these things, only a professional wrestling. It's funny. It's okay that we laugh about it. Apparently, the bell has been found by the Tallahassee police. It's safe and sound. He lost the <laughs> Lost all the who gives a crap. It all ended up in the same result. <laughs> the, the best thing about this all was the, sh the short little Short little video clip that somebody put out there about Jericho. It's some on Bubby. He lost the freaking front title at the steakhouse. I guarantee he had to be eating a freaking baked potato. And you know it's true. <laughs>